Okay, so I'm going to cover five uh, five tips, five good habits that I believe uh, anyone who wants to become a pro gamer in Evo 4 or who wants to become the best player he can be should be implementing in their game, right? I think that it's really valuable to spend some time uh, learning these things because they will be useful for as long as you play the game, regardless of Civ, regardless of meta. I would even go as far as saying that this is useful regardless of the RTS game you play. So definitely worth uh, developing these good habits. You know, if if you haven't already and you have developed uh, some bad habits, at first it will feel wrong. You, you will maybe will start even losing more games due to it. But at the long run, you really need to do these things if you want to become, let's say, a Conqueror 3 player or a top player. Or a, right? Like, the game is hard enough that we should find ways to make it easier for us, right? Not harder. So the first thing I'm going to cover is control groups. Uh, most of you are already probably familiar with them. I just want to make sure that uh, to, lead, to make clear that it's important to use control groups both for your army and your buildings, right? The way you split them is up to taste. Like for instance, some players ra like having all their buildings in the same control group and just uh, tabbing through buildings to produce. I personally like splitting them in the types of buildings. So my archery ranges will be in five, stables will be in six, barracks in four, and so on and so forth. That's up to you, but just make sure you, you have them in a control group and that you can uh, click all of your archery ranges in a given moment by just pressing a hotkey. Right? And then for army, this is a bit more debatable, but I would suggest in AOE4 that you have uh, at the very minimum two control groups and at most four for army. You want to split your... You wanna, what I find very useful is uh, being able to... You know, let's say I have this blob of units here that I can select all my archers by just clicking a unit for multiple reasons. First, if I do it like this, the formations will start uh, messing up with how I want my units to move. They are not moving in the most op optimal way. So this is already annoying. And also, let's say, I don't know, I'm being chased by a, spear by a spearman horseman composition. I really want to make sure that I can hit and run with my archers as smoothly as possible to kill a spearman. This is game... This is a game-changing thing. So you want to make sure you can, you know, right-click a spearman, back, right-click, back, right-click, back. And the way to do that is to have your archers in a specific control group only for them, right? There's no way I can do it like this. Or, you know, I can try to click some archers and we click half of them. It's not viable. Okay, so... Just in case you want to... Um, set them to different keys, like control groups by default are 1 to, t to 0. But I would just suggest that the, the more you use a control group, the closest it is to your uh, usual hand uh, location in the keyboard, right? So for instance, I use uh, this for army, because I find uh, my hand is laying on the left side of the keyboard, right? And the, le the less I use a control group, the farther away it is from my hand, right? So universities, for instance, I have them on U. Uh, siege workshops, I have them on Y, and then, I don't know, monasteries are on N. You get the idea, right? Now, the second thing I want to cover that is probably not as used by most players is uh, camera keys. At the very minimum, I suggest that you use one camera key in your main base. Right, so if you go here to review map controls, camera, it works like a control group, but it's just for a location, right? So you set it there now with Control F3, Control F4. Again, you can put this wherever you want to, right? And then you go to them with F3, F4, F5. So what this allows me is that regardless of where I am in the minimap, by just pressing F3, I get to my main TC. This has multiple advantages. The main one is that when you're being raided, it's just really smooth to do it like this, you know? Like Garrison builds. It takes less like that half a second. You will get very, you will get used to doing this very quickly, like F3, a box, and then just a six shelter. And this can save few villagers, which is really important. And in other games, it can be even more uh, impacting, right? Games with higher lethality. The, the higher the lethality is in the game, the faster you want to, to react to things. But it has other uses as well. Like, let's say I want to... I'm playing Pro Scouts, okay? and I want to grab these deer and send them to my main TC. I'm going to have the, my camera location here, like the usual one, and then I will use a second one for the deer pack. And the way I, I'm going to do this is I'm going to have my scouts in a control group, and then I can just uh, F4, right-click, shift, shift, 
F3, drop, and then back, right? At first, you won't be able to make me make this as fast as you would like to. But you will get very used to it, right? And this is saving a lot of time. And th these are the kind of things that you should look for, right? Um, making processes automatic, or when you have the time to actually grab deer, make sure you just order your scouts to, to drop them, right? Like the seven of them at the same time. Because let's say I just, uh, you know, I do this and I just send them here. And I'm not too familiar with camera keys, so I lost a lot of time and then I'm suddenly uh, having some action in some part of the other map. It's very easy that this scout will just delay, uh, stay effect, uh, you know, without moving there for like two minutes. Whereas if I had just shift Q to everything, they would be working by their own for a very long time, right? Of course, this deer pack is very close to my TC, so in this particular case, it's not as useful. Uh, let's say you have a, another deer pack here that you cannot cover with a single with a single camera location, both locations. It's really useful, right? Uh, let's say it's here. It's very useful for me to F3, F4, and go to one location and the other. You can find more uses uh, to this, like grabbing relics. Um, I don't know, the boar locations. Sometimes with your scout as a ruse, you find a wolf, but you don't, uh, for whatever reason, you don't want to stay there killing it. So you can just leave a camera location. So later on, you, you can remember where it exactly was. It has multiple uses, right? But if you are maybe not too familiar with all these things and this feels a bit overwhelming, at the very least, get used to the, to the one in your main base. It will make going back to your base much smoother and reacting to raids and everything will be after a, l a short while you will notice it it makes a difference right so the third thing i wanted to talk a bit about was shift queue shift queuing things but i guess we've just done that with the with the pro scouts and the and the deer right it has um, multiple uses as well so let's say that a big fight is about to start and my opponent has uh, let's say a mix of spearmen and men at arms right and i have arch archers if I just attack move, uh, eventually, sooner or later, my archers will target a men at arm and they will stop pretty much dealing damage, right? Because they will only deal one damage to them. So, in a way, it, it's almost as if those archers were not in the fight. So, what you want to do in those situations is just imagine these are spearmen. I can just keep uh, right shift queen tons of spearmen. So these archers are going to be attacking for the entire fight, uh, the unit they are supposed to attack, that is the spearmen. But instead, if, again, if I just attack move, at some point they will target a men at arm, right? And they will stop dealing damage. So it's really important to to use shift Q a lot. And then also for grabbing deer, right, as we saw. This is very smooth. Right. In three seconds I can order my scouts to grab the entire deer pack and go back to the TC, go back to the deer pack, and so on and so forth. Right. So the fourth thing I wanted to address was uh, the select idle, idle military. This is, I find, one of the most useful hotkeys that this game has. That is not really that common in other RTS games, or at least not the RTS games I come from, right? So you can find it here, select all idle military. And what is, I mean, it's pretty obvious what it does, right? When I click it, it will select all my, my idle military. So what's the great thing about this? Like, let's say I have um, some units in this side of the map that I don't want to, I, I don't want them to, to move, right? If I if I ever use the select all military, I will grab them and they will move towards my army, right? So imagine I wanted to have control of this location because I'm afraid my opponent is about to raid me or I'm grabbing, you know, s some gold here and I want to leave few spearmen. The select all idle military will really mess with you. So what I've found really useful is that you can leave them, these units patrolling in a very small area. And now whenever I click select all idle military, these units are not going to be selected, right? But they are still defending the place. It's uh, it's the same that if they were, weren't moving, right? Except for the fact that that hotkey doesn't doesn't click them. So I find this hotkey really useful, especially to grab uh, reinforcements as you're fighting. And let's say my rally point is here, and I'm fighting here, and I'm very... These are still working, by the way. And I'm fighting here, and I don't have time to check anything. Like, you will develop the habit of just uh, select a military attack move as you're fighting. Right. So... 
you won't even realize and you will find yourself uh, never having either military, never having units forgotten in the rally point, never having units forgotten in a corner of the map. Because the units that you want, that you really want to, to have in one place will be patrolling. So combined with patrol, I feel like select all either military is a really useful hotkey that I would recommend uh, everyone to use, uh, get used to, to it. So this, and then at the end, I just like as a rule of thumb, if if you can do something in three clicks, don't do it in five. If you can do it in four actions, don't do it in seven. And if you can do it with the co with the keyboard, don't do it with the mouse. I think that those two rules uh, are pretty much always correct, so you can abide by them in order to make your life easier, right? And then yeah, just the the more you use something, the closest you want it to have to your hand. You know, these are really five topics uh, that I wanted to cover because more often than not I get these messages that you know this game feels like too hard. Uh, I feel like I need to be too fast, and there's some truth to that, of course. Uh, in RTS games, you need mechanics, you need to be fast. But the very first thing you need to do is to make uh, things as easy as possible to you. So if you probably dive into the control groups in every, all the things that you are allowed to bind. You can probably find things that uh, suit your, uh, your playstyle or that suit you very well in terms of where you place your hand in order to make your life much easier. So yeah, I would suggest really spending uh, enough time in these things because they they are they are really going to pay in the long run. So yeah, hopefully this was helpful to you and see you next time. <laughs>